What's going on guys, Derek Zand with Valley Food Review. We are at Monster Car Wash Barbecue Bar and Grill in Edinburgh, Texas. Yes, it is under new management and excellent things are happening here. Right now they're inside getting ready for Noodle Fest 2020. We get the chance to meet with Chef Zach Hazlitt who is making noodles as we speak. So we get a sneak peek into that process and he's gonna tell us a little bit about the event. Well, let's check it out. Okay guys, we're here in the kitchen at Monster Car Wash Barbecue Bar and Grill and we are speaking with the one and only Redbeard, Zach Hazlett, uh, what, with Redbeard Walking Kitchen and Monster Car Wash. Oh, that's right, you have your own, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, so tell us a little bit about that. What? Tell us about Noodle Fest, you know, whatever you want to let us know about. Um, so what, Noodle Fest has been going on for, this will be our fourth year, going strong, and it's only grown since then. We actually have a band from Japan, Osaka, Paranoid Void. They're, they, I saw that. I right? saw that. Three girls like just rocking out. I had a preview of their music, and it's it's really awesome. It's something I, totally different for for South Texas, mm -hmm. definitely if you're not used to it. Right. Uh, where is it held? Uh, what's it called? It's at Yerberia Coturu, uh, the last bar on 17th Street, okay. like right past or past Cine El Rey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what we will have, including me, we'll have another four other vendors. What Motor Ramen's actually coming back. Uh, we have Pork Company, which is a guy from Monterrey. Uh, we have another guy, we have another person doing uh, <laughs> pork ramen, and then we also have the Gremlin. Is pork ramen, good. is it is it full on tonkatsu or is it uh, like their own concoction? It's their own concoction. Most people just do what they want. Uh, I kind of like take, with my noodles, I do Texas barbecue with... Uh, <laughs> with uh, Texas Asian barbecue? Yeah, Texas barbecue with Asian flavors. Wow, that yeah. sounds amazing. So yeah, it's a lot of smoked things. Uh, what, I have pulled pork. Uh, I also have Dan Dan, which is a spicy sweet pork. What's it called? Dan Dan. Dan Dan. Dan Dan. Dan Dan, so it's a spicy sweet pork and I'm doing it Trumpo style. Okay. So I'm gonna slice it up nice and thin. Had to be some like, South Texas influence in there somewhere. Right, <laughs> right that, and then uh, what? My ve I have two vegan uh, options, which I'm also gonna do a vegan Dan Dan. You know, people were wondering about that and they weren't sure. I remember last time they asked on the post, so that's good to know that there are gonna be vegan options here at, uh, yeah. at Noodle yeah. Fest. We'll have two vegan options, plus we'll also be able to take care of anyone who's gluten-free or on the paleo or uh, keto diet. Wow, what a world we live in. Right. Whatever your niche, they got it covered. Right. Well, I mean, uh, uh, you, it, it's all about the customer and what they want. So, can you make my noodles out of beef? What? What? <laughs> what? I'm just kidding. Wait, what? What? It would be the anti-vegan noodle, I guess. Noodle, right. Some yeah. sirloin steak, just yeah, cut it into strips, it throw it in the bowl. Yeah. Ooh, we will also have a menudo ramen. What with? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, that's what I was. What, Work never what? stops. Work so never workers. stops. Right. <laughs> This, what is this that you have here? Is that? What is that? Chilaquiles. Chilaquiles, that looks amazing. That so is so good. You can, actually can, you, can you hold that up a little bit? So we can, about right here, so we can see that? that is, oh, whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's gonna drop. What's it called? Yeah. But you can Thank find you. that for our brunch option here at Monster every Sunday. We have chilaquiles, like eggs benedict, like all the good stuff. That's right, I hear you'll have a rather expanded menu coming up. Uh, what most people may or may not know is that this place is under new ownership. Yep. And uh, I've already seen, I've met the owner, he's a wonderful guy, he's very driven, seems to know what he's doing, he's on top of everything, and he's got uh, this amazing menu. Just the, the few items that he told me uh, were, were right. great. Is there anything on there particularly that you're excited about? Well, we're, I'm always excited about our sliders. I think I like actually the, the plate that we did for it. I think that's the coolest thing. It actually comes with the ketchup right there, and then we have a skewer that comes up, and we stack our, <laughs> we basically oh, stack cool. our sliders. <laughs> All right, so about the noodles. Um, so noodles, what, well, I, noodles what I understand is that, yes, you're hand making the noodles today, and we get a chance to see how that's done, actually, correct? Actually, yeah, totally. Uh, what, it's two kinds of flour, uh, katsui powder, and some salt. And you roll it. I let it sit for like a good 30 minutes, and then we can. And then we'll actually roll it out on my pasta machine. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, do you want to get into that and show us how it's done? Sure. All right. Let's check it out. 
So it basically been, this dough has been rested for like 30 minutes. I like to leave it wrapped as I'm cutting out my dough balls so it doesn't dry out. And then what? So basically you take a good portion of your dough, kind of flatten a little bit. Make sure your pasta machine is at one. <laughs> you don't want to start rolling it at like a four or five. Anyway, and right now it's kind of just like getting the dough to flatten. I don't add a lot of cornstarch because I want it to stick to itself. So yeah, once it gets to a nice, smooth consistency, somewhat, that's when I add my cornstarch and I start going down on my Corn starts so it doesn't stick too much. Now I can go down on my pasta machine. And I usually go to like a four. That's how far I flatten it. So this is what how thick you want it, all that nice sheet of pasta. Now we can cut it. I have a friend, <laughs> I have a friend back uh, in South Carolina, we called him Soft Hands. He, was, he helped me out, uh, him, and, him and his girlfriend, Annabelle and Josh, they both helped me out the last two years, for our, my first two years of doing Noodle Fest. We called him Soft Hands. <laughs> soft Hands, why'd you call him Soft Hands? Because that's what he would always say when we were making noodles, because sometimes when I first started making noodles, uh, <laughs> I was a little rough with my noodles. <laughs> but he's like, no, no, you gotta be gentle with them. Do not hurt the noodles. The noodles are your friends. So yeah. So yeah, thank you, Josh. I miss you. You and Annabelle, I wish they could be here. I still can't believe we're, we're going four years strong on Noodle Fest. I remember the first year we did noodles, and we did it by hand, and we broke two of, two of our pasta machines that night. We were doing it all to order. Yeah, never again. Now we make them ahead of time. So you always want to coat your noodles in cornstarch, keep them from sticking, and then when it's just do a nice little twirl. Handmade noodles. All right, guys, so here's a special treat. Hector has a specialty here, and it's called the chilequiles, as you heard a little while ago. And he gave us a little sample so we could try it out. So here they are, and uh, they're nice and fresh. Uh, normally, they sell for $7 here at Monster Car Wash but this is a smaller portion than what you get, so you get a lot more for your money when you order them here. Uh, so let's try it out and see how it is. Oh, look at that, perfectly fried egg. Beautiful. Of course, I got my signature chopsticks. <laughs> Don't leave home without them. Mmm, that's so good. Oh, man. You know what? I'm gonna have another bite before I comment. Y'all just gonna have to wait. Or fast forward, either way. Take a look at that. Whoop! Got it.
I'm telling you guys, Monster Car Wash is doing some amazing things here. Okay, so I'm getting the flavors all together. I put some of the egg on top of the chip with the sauce, with the cheese, with the sprinkled cheese, and there's spice to it. If you like spicy foods, you'll definitely love this. It's a kind of uh, in the back of the molar spice, you know, kind of like uh, the A1. It gets you here, and it gets you right here. And it's the back of the back of the mouth kind of thing. Uh, anybody who's had a really good spicy red sauce in South Texas will recognize this right away. And uh, the fried egg just puts it over the top, definitely. Uh, I think if I order this again, I'd actually order the plate maybe covered in fried eggs to make it more like a breakfast dish. And this, this portion right here is actually a really good size, so the fact that you get more than this is saying a lot. I feel like uh, this little portion right here with a couple of beers and I'm, I'm happy. That's all I need. Mm. <laughs> okay, chilaquiles, definitely amazing. You have to come and taste all these flavors together for yourself. Uh, $7, get a larger order, try them out. Uh, Valley Food Review approved. All right, guys. So we're over here now. The water's boiling, and tell us what's next. All right. So now we're gonna cook our noodles. So I'm basically making a swirl in my water, and then you just let them in. You just want to keep them constantly moving so they don't stick. Right. And then kind of pick at them. Just get them. Make sure that they don't stick to the bottom, and they actually. I mean, they'll cook, they pretty much cook in a minute. They're more likely to stick because they're very starchy, right? Oh, yeah. That's why we coat them in a lot of uh, cornstarch so they don't actually stick with each other. Ah, I see. Yeah. And even if you, like, make your noodles uh, a day ahead, and uh, really all you have to do is hit them with hot broth and they'll separate and finish cooking. Okay. So now that they're floating, I want to try to get them all in a little bunch, get them into my basket. Now you put them in the cold water, and yeah. what does that do? That basically stops them from cooking, uh -huh. so that we don't have overcooked noodles. But I mean, and now it's basically. Oh, I see. So they're they're perfect. You want to keep them that way. Yeah. I got you. That's why. Wow, that looks really good. So there's handmade ramen. If I was at Monkey King Noodle Company, we would like grab a bunch. And now we're probably going to give you some here. What? Fresh ramen, a little green onion. I love green onion, actually. Oh, I do too. Absolutely. We make a little green onion. Some cilantro. Because who doesn't like cilantro? And then we got some fresh bean sprouts that I've, I've been growing. Totally fresh. Nice. Yeah, a fresh bean sprout. And a little smoked tomato. It's like one of my favorite kind of like earthy. Smoked tomato. Smoked tomato. Smoked cherry tomatoes. Interesting. Yeah. And I squeeze them a little bit just to. So this is uh, some fresh pulled pork that I made yesterday. As you can see, it's so ready. We'll put a little on top. And now it's broth time.
you go. A nice wow. blue part on it. That looks really, really good. So this is just one of the ramens that we'll be selling. And it actually comes in a larger bowl. It, it will be for eight bucks, uh, 16 ounces. So like basically a pound of food. 16 ounces, yeah. $8 for $8. this same bowl of ramen, but it, bigger. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Basically. <laughs> All right, magic chopstick powers activate. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Magic of editing. Yes. All right, that pork looks really, really good. Oh yeah. It looks uh, very well cooked. It doesn't look dry at all. And not just because you poured broth over it either. I mean, it really looks good. Right. We can tell, you can tell because I can slice it in half with my chopsticks. Look at that, just falling apart. That's how it should be. Right. Lovely pork flavor, and then you're gonna have a nice, good, earthy broth. Ooh, yeah. Tell me more about this broth. So uh, with broth, you always want it like earthy, a little sweet, a little sour, a little, uh, a lot of umame in it, right? Um, so that's what I do. I usually use a lot of veggie ends that I save throughout the week. It, it kind of helps like bulk up the broth, especially like when you're doing a vegan broth. Uh, yeah. yeah, you need more, you have more of the flavor because you don't have the meat to add to it. Now. Right. For those of you who don't know, umami is the essence of flavor and it basically translates to yum. Yeah. Delicious. I mean, if there was a word for that, it just encompassed that, that down to your soul, that deep deliciousness, it would be umami for sure. Oh yeah. And then I hope the, the bean sprouts will bring that in. There's. All of them, uh, it's mung bean, there's lentils, there's uh, radish and fava beans and all kinds of like different sprouts. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try the broth because that's very important. And how long did you say it was cooking for again? Uh, it's been cooking for like at least two hours now. But I usually let it go all night. So that flavor will just intensify mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. as it goes. Definitely very vegetable, but it's a strong flavor. Oh, yeah. yeah, I use a lot of mushroom ends and all that stuff. But yeah, by tomorrow, this will the the broth will totally change from what it tastes like now to the next day. I can really taste the pork. Mm -hmm. That's coming through. Uh, the noodles themselves actually are imparting a flavor into the broth already. Okay. That's been sitting here for a little while. That's something you usually only get with fresh noodles. Right, well, I mean, it, it basically starts them cooking again once you put hot broth so they absorb that water. All right, let me try the pork first. Mmm, that tastes smoked. Yeah, it is, it's smoked pork. It smoked is smoked pork. Oh, okay. Yeah, I smoked it for 10 hours. Oh, that's hours. right, that's right, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I wanna try these tomatoes. Uh, you're, you're gonna like that. It's kind of like, uh, you know, Ivan Ramen, like, what, he's a New Yorker who went to Japan and became famous for making ramen. You know, but I'm gonna check him out now. Yeah, Ivan Ramen, look him up. He's awesome. Uh, but he even talked about it and he, he did this, he was trying to find his umame for his, his ramen one day and he actually did oven roasted tomatoes. So I really like the idea but I didn't want to totally copy him, and, and I'm a big smoked kind of guy. Like most of my stuff is smoked or like barbecued. I mean, it's kind of like my Texas thing. And I like that. That's really great. Now, most people will look at that and think uh, cherry tomato. Yeah. Right. But it definitely tastes different than a cherry tomato. Right. It's like you sucked out the guts of the tomato and replaced them with something lighter. Right. Almost. Yeah. Uh, I want to say it tastes almost like it was infused with white wine, which is really great. I don't know how you managed to accomplish that. But it's, <laughs> it's really just smoke. Yeah, it's, it's, it does such cool things to vegetables. And you know, I, I like that you bite into it and it kind of shoots all the, the liquid into, into your, your mouth. mouth when you, yeah, when right. you bite into it. It's, it's that magical little pop that you get. Yeah, like it's filled with, with this wonderful smoked tomato juice. Yep. And that's, uh, those are the kind of things we want to mm. bring to like ramen, like is because ramen really doesn't have a set traditional rules it's really a broth noodles and whatever kind of toppings you want right okay moment of truth moment of truth noodle ready? time ready noodle time i want to get just the noodles here
Mmm. Those are absolutely perfect. Right? Absolutely perfect, Zach. Thank I love you. them. I know I... Uh, I have to say, like, the way I found out how to do noodles perfectly was my friend Annabelle. Like, she came in one day, we, we, <laughs> we were just trying to figure it out, and, like, she just came in and, like, set us straight and got us on the right path, and boom. Yeah, I have So she was your, your noodle guru? Yeah, my noodle guru, <laughs> who got me to do noodles so well. Where is she now? Uh, she's actually in South Carolina. Oh, I expected to say wandering the hills of China trying to find her next adventure. Uh, it would have been cooler. So yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> hey, wherever you're at, thank you out there. Right. Thank, thank you, you Annabelle. Mm. So, yeah, right? You're definitely going to come to Noodle Fest now. For those of you who are wondering, I'm not being rude. It's quite the opposite. Slurping noodles is the way you're supposed to eat it. Actually, he is correct on that. And it's not just a traditional way to do it. When you slurp up the noodle, the air that you get in with it also helps release some of the flavor when you eat it. And it's considered a compliment. Right. So, definitely. If I didn't like it, I'd do this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love it, man. I absolutely love it. And you know what? I'm going to finish the rest of this. Dude, it's yours. I'm so, glad you enjoyed it. What other kinds of uh, noodles are you going to have there? So, we're going to have, uh, we actually have a menudo ramen, which is going to be fun. We're actually, we cut the stomach to actually fit the, to look like noodles. So, they're going to get noodles plus a little stomach in it. So, it's going to be kind of cool. Oh, meat noodles. Yeah, meat That's noodles. what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> what did you just open with that? <laughs> yeah, meat noodles. We Sorry. can do that. Oh, yeah. man, that's going to be awesome. Meat and it's going to be uh, Saturday? Yeah, Saturday, January 18th, mm -hmm. uh, from 6 to 1 in the morning. Yeah. 6 to 1 in the morning? Yeah. Oh, but y'all are serving drinks. Yeah, we're serving drinks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're serving, they're, they're, the bar will be open. There'll be other, uh, including me, there'll be other noodle vendors, lots of bands. We got a band from Louisiana. We have a band from uh, El Paso, and then what? Paranoid Void from J Osaka, Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I'm excited about. Um, what else do we? Oh, on noodles we have Dan Dan, of course, which is my spicy sweet crumple style uh, noodle, and then smoked mushroom, which is actually my standard. I've been selling that like every year now, so I have to go with I have to go with what the crowd likes. <laughs> yep. Right? And that's vegan. And then also, I'll have vegan Dan Dan. You know, I can't get enough of these fresh noodles. Right? Yeah, I'm listening to you and I'm just, there's flavors in my mouth. Have you seen uh, Ratatouille? Yeah. When he takes a bite of one object and another and he has all these things shooting off in his brain, that's what I'm experiencing right now. <laughs> that, that memory, uh, mm -hmm. yes. And you know, but that's uh, what is food. Is food is memories. It is, it's what reminds us of as people, that we are people. And, I think sometimes we forget that we should be sharing our food. Yeah, we definitely should share our food. And I yeah. think Noodle Fest is a good way to do that because you get a lot of different takes on it. Uh, you get the fresh noodles, which is something that you can't normally buy. Yeah. Uh, as a matter uh, of fact, here in, in, in McAllen, Texas, for those of you who don't know, if you would like to buy a packet of quote unquote fresh noodles, you can go to Tokyo Asia Market. And they have their, uh, in a liquid that keeps them fresh and they have them in the refrigerator. They're a little bit thicker than this. And of course, they're not going to be as tasty because they were not fresh made right in front of you that kind of thing, but they're the closest thing you can get to fresh noodles and you can find them there. Um, yeah, Tokyo ramen. Market is, is a great Tokyo, place. Tokyo, I love uh, it. They I even have the I giant chopsticks for, for cooking yeah. the noodles I know, and stuff that's like why that. I, yeah, and, I get uh, a lot of my stuff from there. You know what, ramen noodles used to be only for the rich, believe it or not. Um, after World War II, there was a shortage of rice, so they brought in um, uh, wheat flour. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was imported from America and they started making uh, wheat, wheat flour based foods and ramen was one of those. And it actually died. Uh, in popularity because they thought that they couldn't have uh, extravagant foods, they didn't have you know, mm -hmm. resources for, for fast food and stuff like that. And when it came back, uh, one packet of ramen, which was about mm, that big, would cost about 35 yen, which I think is about 30 cents American. Probably. To put that in perspective, you could get six packs, six packs of fresh udon noodles for the price of one pack of ramen noodles. <laughs> so that's saying a lot. Yeah. But ramen is not just for the rich anymore. Ramen is for everyone. You guys can come out this Saturday and try it at Yerberia Cultura. Did I, did I, I didn't say that right. Yer, Yerberia Cultura. 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 On January the 18th. 18th. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, come out and have a bowl of noodles. <laughs> All, All right. right, hey Zach.
thank you so much for your thank time. You. Uh, thank thank you. you for the wonderful noodles. Uh, I'm going to finish these before I leave, so you're oh, stuck yeah. in here for a little while. I hope you it's don't mind. Cool. Guys, uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you at Noodle Fest on Saturday. Hell yeah. Come try some fresh noodles. Yeah.